Hello, explorers. I'm Pam Marikia, and it's the 11th of May, 2022, as I record this intro. This week, we're flashing back to episode 238, a lovely conversation I had with Jessica Kane in 2020. Jessica and her husband live in Ireland and have three children. Her oldest attended school through high school, her middle son left school in grade four, and her youngest son has never been to school. This gives her such a unique perspective to share. We talked about de-schooling and some of the challenges she faced, what she has learned about relationships and communication with her husband, and what has surprised her about her family's unschooling life. I really enjoyed the details that Jessica shared about her journey and her personal growth, and I think her story is such a beautiful example of the value of de-schooling. So Jessica shares this gem in our conversation. I have a lot of opinions. I have a lot of wanting to be right, or did have. I'm recovering from being right all the time, and it's just so nice to be able to be happy and not be right because it doesn't matter. All those little things, they are so unimportant. And what is so important is the relationship every single time. It's so easy to get swept back into it. But when you have the de-schooling that you've done and you remember what's important, you get back to it faster. So one of the layers that releasing the need to be right helped me peel back was how incredibly often my idea of right was actually more correctly right for me. So putting my connection and relationship with my child or my partner ahead of my need to show how smart I was by telling them the right answer is what gave me the space to let things unfold a bit more without my direct intervention. And in that space, amazing things happened. My world got so much bigger. There were so many other ways for things to go. Ways that I could now see worked so well for the person involved and made so much sense, even though it might not be the way I would do it in the same situation. And because I hadn't created a disconnect between us by jumping in, I was more engaged and involved in how things unfolded, and I learned so much more about them. And I just had so much more fun with them, as Jessica was talking about. I was curious about how things would go rather than feeling frustrated that they weren't going my way. (laughs) So often I was humbled by how small my idea actually was. Now that doesn't mean my idea was wrong. It just means it was right for me. Though maybe now I like their idea even better. So that's what I mean by my world got so much bigger. I hope our conversation plants some interesting seeds for you. Before we dive in, I want to take a moment to thank everyone who has chosen to support the podcast through Patreon. I deeply appreciate all my patrons. Your generous support is instrumental in keeping the podcast archive freely available to anyone who's curious and wants to explore the fascinating world of unschooling. If you'd like to join my community of patrons and scoop up some great rewards along the way, check out the Exploring Unschooling page at patreon.com. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com forward slash exploring unschooling. And now, please enjoy my conversation with Jessica. Welcome, I'm Pam Larickia from livingjoyfully.ca and today I'm here with Jessica Kane. Hi, Jessica. Hi. Hi. So we have been connected online for a couple of years now, including the Childhood Redefined Summit um, and now the Living Joyfully Network. And I really enjoyed getting little glimpses into your family's lives. And all that is to say, I'm super excited to connect with you here and learn even more about your unschooling journey. So to get us started. Can you share with us a bit about you and your family and maybe what a little bit about what everyone's into right now? Yeah, so I'm American and I came to Ireland where I live now on a kind of a semester abroad with the college that I was going to. I grew up in Michigan and um, I, this was my first stop on my European tour. (laughs) It was the last stop on my European tour. (laughs) 
and I've gone other places since then, but that the tour never took place. I stayed here and I met my husband and it was not the intention um, as so few things are. And, um, and we just, it's just been here for 23 years. I've been here. It's crazy to think about. It's so long. I've been here longer. I moved here when I was 20. So I'm here longer than I've been in America, which is, it, it, kind, of, it kind of messes me up. I'm like, am I still from there? I don't know, you know? So we're here and we have three kids and um, all doing super fun things. We live in the West, on the West coast of Ireland and it's absolutely beautiful. And yeah, I love it. I, uh, for a while I wanted to go back home and I thought, you know, I want my kids to see how I grew up. And it's just so amazing here. I don't have those feelings anymore. This is where we are. This is where we are rooted. This is, it's just, and, and the kids don't feel that way either. They're like, no, we're from here. This is where we're from. And I love that so much that, that, they, that they feel that way. It's, it's such a beautiful place. Such a special, special, special place here in the West of Ireland. And let's see what we're all up to. <laughs> well, I... I'm up to many things and I don't know, <laughs> so many things. I am a kinesiologist and I am a pranic healer. I am a vegan and I do a vegan food blog with my sister who, it was her idea. She said, you give me the recipes, so I'll do the blog part. I said, perfect. So she does that every month and it's, it's so fun. It's just really fun. Um, and I've started getting into organic growing. I have a polytunnel, like a greenhouse, and I call it my farm. And <laughs> I have to go down to the farm every day. And it's, it's, it's amazing. And I had a small little one. And now it's, I, I have a much bigger one. And thanks to lockdown and my husband was needed things to do. So yeah. he built it <laughs> and it's wonderful. So, you know, and I don't really know that much about what I'm doing. I mean, I research a bit, but you don't really know until you do it. So it, now I kind of know, okay, well, these vegetables would be better over on this side and this one would be better over here. And it's just, uh, it is so freeing because I would have been, you know, like a really big perfectionist for a long time. And if it was, if I wasn't going to do it right, I didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. Where now I'm kind of just putting stuff on the ground and going, well, I hope it goes. <laughs> and if it does, so, like if, if I don't get potatoes, that's okay. <laughs> you know, whereas before it just would have been devastating. So it's nice to see my own growth along the way too. And I love hiking and I love traveling and um, yeah, that's me pretty much. I, I was the biggest one, the kids. I love being with the kids. I love being home with the kids. I love seeing what they're doing and watching what they're doing and watching them, um, you know, in their triumphs and their not so triumphant moments because that's where the real learning is. And it's just, it's huge. And then I get to learn as well. It's just, it's fascinating. And, and I love it so much. Um, let's see my husband, James, he, oh my gosh, he does all the things. All of all of the things there are to do, he does them all. <laughs> so he, he start, I'm so serious. <laughs> he started as an electrician and he is also a qualified plumber. He um, can install solar panels and, and solar tubes. He can install gas and refrigeration gas. And he just, he just, that's, those are the things that he just does, but he loves uh, windsurfing. He loves trail running. He loves mountain running. And the best part about all of that, that he, and he loves adventure races where you run up a mountain and you go on a bike for too long and then you got to <laughs> kayak or you got to swim and it's like, okay, he loves this. But the best part, my favorite part about that is that he's a real competitive person and I like to hike. I am not in a hurry. And this hiking has only come later in my life because I've watched him for so many years be so competitive. And I, I don't like that. I don't want to be competitive. I don't want to go fast. I want to go at my own pace and do my own thing. 
So it was only after a while, I was kind of like, oh, I don't have to do it that way. I, I can do it my own way. But he is super, super competitive, but he's competitive with himself. You know, he, he has a lot of friends and they're all into this and they all love doing this and that. And whereas if somebody does, you know, a couple minutes faster than him or gets a little, you know, more speed than him and they're all on their watches and they're on the computer and they're, you know, everything's mapped out and, um, he will see that and he'll be like, Oh, I wonder if I can do that. And it's never, he never has any sort of like, Oh, like upset with somebody because he wasn't, he, it makes him push himself. And he's really supportive of them. Like, Oh, you should have seen so-and-so's time. They did so, so well. And oh, I'm going to try it tomorrow. And so I've really learned a lot um, from him. He's just, he's amazing. He's, he's very much competitive, but with himself. And I think there's something really great there about, you know, being really, really supportive of everybody else who's doing it and then thinking, well, I came in this place this time and I wonder if I did this now I could come in a, a different place. And it's never trying to get ahead of anybody, just trying to get ahead of himself. So it's, uh, it's for the, um, it, it, I love watching that. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, Roisin, she's our oldest. She just turned 21. She also loves the mountain run, the mountain running and the hiking and running. She and James have gone off since we've been in lockdown. They've been doing a lot of training together and they're loving it. They love it. They both are so good. They're, they've got this big thing planned where they're going to have to, I think it's called, it's called orienteering where they have to look at maps and compasses and it's a 24 hour thing. They're going to have to sleep out. I don't know. <laughs> I'll be at home. <laughs> that's where I will be uh, and cheering them on I'm, I'm the big cheerleader that's where I go and people say to me are you going to do this yeah I'll be at the end I'll be clapping that's what I do <laughs> but yeah that's her she is uh, also a vegan she's very much into animal rights and the big Black Lives Matter movement right now is really I mean she was into that already but she's it's really spurred her on and very much into um, equal rights and climate change and all of those things and learning as much as she can about that. She's, she's very, very passionate um, about those topics. She is also an actor. So she went to school all the way, she went all the way through school no one's schooling for her and um then she went to college but college it was not a good fit and she you know finished there and she has been working ever since she's had a few jobs and she had a few jobs lined up but now we're on lockdown so that's that's all kind of postponed but since then she's still she might have a few more in the pipeline but she's also because she's very very much like James she um isn't, I mean, she is, she did some theater acting, she's done some film stuff, and she is now writing her own short film and making lists of who she needs to talk to and what equipment she needs. And of course she has friends now who, through all of her contacts mm -hmm. and, um, so she's, she, there's a story she wants told and she wants it told her way and she's doing it. And but with Roshin and, and, and James, they're very uh, big energy. When they come into the room, you know they're there. And so with them, I tend to just get out of the way. <laughs> like they come in and they've got plans and they've got they're ideas. And it, yeah. they are, they are, and don't try and even say, well, I don't know if that'll work. Don't even say that. <laughs> they will I've I've so many times I've said this is not we don't there's not enough hours in the day or we can't do all these things and yeah there is there are I didn't know I was wrong <laughs> every time <laughs> okay just do your thing um so that's that's them and Ronan is 15 he is the oldest uh boy he is so different He's very calm. He's very, he's very introverted, but he's very um, introspective. He's, he's very chilled out. He's the most chilled out person. He does not get riled up. 
he even if something happens that he doesn't like he still i i'm so amazed by him he's so calm um he is very much into japanese games and japan and the language and learning it and he loves games he's a big tech person um it used to be i would call james if something was wrong and now i call james and he says well did you ask ronan <laughs> like oh yeah of course but we ask ronan now yeah yeah ronan, anything at all i'll say you know i'll call him he'll be i don't know on a different floor of the house because i you know or like the moment we're in different places so i'll ronan <laughs> um can you help i don't know why netflix isn't working and he has to come down and he fixes it and he he's so gracious and he's so he's just the sweetest kindest um being he really really does care very deeply about lots and lots of things and he doesn't talk a lot you know he he talks when he has something to say and that's so rare in, in, in my life, I think, because I tend to blather on a lot. <laughs> and, um, I just love that when he has something to say, and when he has something to say, he will tell you. He's not shy about telling you, but he doesn't say anything unless he's really got something to say. He's just, he's just very special. Um, Let's see. So yeah, games. He loves consoles. He loves vintage consoles. Mm -hmm. He loves vintage, all the old stuff he wants to get, whether it works or doesn't work. He loves looking at it and seeing it. he has all the different consoles and he, there's a few he is missing and is looking to get. And um, let's see what else. Pretty much just gaming and but you wouldn't even know what games he would be playing. He could he could be playing Animal Crossing and then 10 minutes later playing Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> he, 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 lo he loves them all. He loves all of them. He's not stuck in one yeah. genre. He, he likes the learning ones. Um, he was big into Kerbal Space Program there a while ago. Oh, my goodness. And so fun. And he made a boat. And he made a boat on a space program. And he showed this to me. I'm, How are you doing this? So... He made this boat and he had, it was very careful. He had to get it to the water without breaking it. And then it could take off and fly from the water, but he could land on land or he could land in the water. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it just, you just keep doing what you're doing. It's amazing. Um, and then our little one is six Lennon. He is um, very fun. He, we, well, I say he's like a cartoon character. He's very animated. He's very expressive. He's arms and legs. And when he talks to you, he's talking like this. And he can't stay still. And he's very, and his face is going. And he's just loves life always. Even if, like, even if there's something that he is sad about. He's the sad, he's very sad, but it's like the drama of it. You know? He enjoys the drama of being sad about it. That's, so he's, he is interesting and he really likes Lego. And at the moment, he's very much into Minecraft. Mm -hmm. And he loves, so, well, he has all of his brothers hand me down Lego. And then his older cousin had a lot of Lego that we inherited. And so he just, he has it all. And one day he will be so into Minecraft. It's the only thing he could, he was, he would die without it. And then the next day he could wake up in the morning and be playing with Jurassic Park Lego or Star Wars Lego or something else and just be so, so into that. And I'm, I, I like to watch for the transitions, how it happens. And sometimes it's, he's so deeply focused on this one thing. And then he finds um, a piece that's in, the Minecraft that goes to Star Wars and he remembers, oh yeah, Star Wars. And then he goes and gets the Star Wars toys and then it's all <laughs> I love seeing how their 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 little brains work. Um but that's that, that's us. He loves everything. He he loves he just learned how to ride his bike. Um he had a new bike. He didn't have any training wheels and 
I said I'd hang on to the back and within 15 minutes he was gone mm-hmm. and hasn't looked back since. And he said, I don't need you anymore, mom. I can do this by myself. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All the words you want to hear, but at the same time, like, oh, <laughs> so that's awesome. and that's what we're doing. I'm sure I've left out a load of things, but that's just what's here at the moment. So. Oh, thank you so much. That is such a beautiful little snapshot. And I love, I love the little pieces that you pulled out too. And especially, you know, when you're talking about Lennon there, like seeing the different connections, I could hear that in all, you know, descriptions of everyone, right? All those little pieces and what kind of leads here and what goes here. And it's so, so fascinating to see through their eyes for a little while, isn't it? It really is. And I I really love that aspect of it, of, of kind of getting down and being on the level and seeing what he loves and why, like, why he loves things. We don't have any pets at the moment, but in Minecraft, he has all the animals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he, he can't have any more cats because the game won't <laughs> let him have any more cats. <laughs> And then, so he gets the ocelots and he, he tames them and he's like, oh, it's my cat. So he has, so he's filling that need because he really, really loves animals. And we travel a lot. Well, I mean, we've been locked down for a while, but we do tend to travel a lot. I travel back and forth home and I go for several weeks at a time and it's not really fair on animals. And we have had animals in the past. We just don't have any right now. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get away with that for much longer. Yeah. <laughs> We're probably going to need an animal soon. (laughs) It is interesting to see how things flow, isn't it? (laughs) Yeah, okay. I love animals too, but it's it's hard to you know be gone for several weeks at a time. And but yeah, no, that's it's the whole bigger picture of 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 choices, right? I mean, that's something with unschooling that I think when we bring that lifestyle into our family, we have kind of those bigger picture wider ranging conversations I think right the 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 concept it's not all just about are you going to take care of this pet are you going to take care of this pet no no it's just so much more about the lifestyle and and thinking even from the pet's point of view and you know we're going to be away and and you know we go lots of lots of races mountain racing you know all that kind of stuff like all those little pieces come into the conversation don't they yeah yeah that's so cool okay so now I think we would be very interested to hear how you discovered unschooling and what your family's move to unschooling look like yeah I I didn't even know anything about unschooling I mean I knew about homeschooling mm-hmm. um, I knew about homeschooling when I when I was in school and there were people in my area that had done homeschooling. They were very religious, which is fine. And it, it was just, they were at home because they wanted their kids to be in that way. And that's fine. Um, I never thought about it again. And Roisin started school, elementary school, and she loved it, loved it. And so I just thought, what kids do I have one kid and she loves school and so we'll have the other kids and they'll love school and it'll be great and she as she had the school is hmm, let me speak (laughs) it's very rural where we are very very rural and uh, the school is only three rooms so all the grades of the elementary school there's three kind of two three grades in each of the rooms so you'd have the same teacher for a few years in a row yeah and the school that Roisin went to, the way that it was designed, it was very, very hippie school, art, um, music. They had an organic garden. Some of them were growing oysters in the, in the sea. They had oyster beds. It was so much stuff going on, and it was an amazing time for that school. You know, they had book fairs. They had, they really celebrated, you know, the holidays, and it was just all about developing children's curiosity and and very very little to do with academics I mean they had that of course you have to but it wasn't about that it was about are you interested in an instrument then let's get one and play it and the school had so many instruments to loan to the children and there was a band and she was in the school you know kind of 
traditional Irish band and she played music and it was just such an amazing place. And then the principal retired and his wife who had been there the whole time and she was kind of the infant's teacher, the kindergarten teacher. She also retired then very shortly after. And as Ronan was going into that school, it was a very big regime change and Roshin was leaving that school and Ronan was going in and he really, really enjoyed it. He did not, he could do the work, it was not a problem. He didn't do the work because he didn't want to, but he loved the social aspect of it. He loved all the social and the kids and he was playing with all the kids. He really, really enjoyed that. And, um, but the teachers had a problem because he, he just didn't, he wouldn't do the work. And then that, of course, that led to them sending him home with more work. And then that led to me sitting with him at the table going, you have to do this. And it turned me into a horrible person. And I was like, there gotta be a better way. So he was in about fourth class, fourth grade. And it, it was bad. And I said, look, we can homeschool. Uh, we can do this. You know, I want, I didn't, I didn't want to make him. Mm -hmm. I wanted it. I wanted him to it to be kind of his choice. I wanted him to decide because it's not going to work otherwise. So I was like, look at weekend homeschool. He was like, no, he loved playing with his friends. He loved having those social times. I said, okay, but that means you got to do this. So he said, he kept going, he kept going. And he, he was in a classroom at that time with a teacher who they did not gel. And that's probably the nicest way I can say that. <laughs> so <laughs> they did not gel at all. And I used to work at that school because I taught art there for a couple of years. So I was working there at the same time and I saw it. There was, and he's not, he's not a person, he was never one to over-exaggerate. And when he said things, I believed him. And then I worked there and I knew he, what he was saying was true. So he had this teacher and I thought, well, he's, he's going to go into um, this next room. Yeah. So we were waiting it out. So he went into the next room and it was, it wasn't great, but it was better. And then his teacher was going to go on maternity leave because they were all the, the three teachers. They were all quite young, three or four teachers and they all kept going on maternity leave, which is fine, you know, it's just gonna happen. But he ended up having about, I think I counted one time, nine or 10 different teachers before he got to like third grade because of so many maternity yeah. leaves. It, you can't, there's no continuity. You don't, each, each different teacher wants something different. And it's a lot, they're small, they're young. They're very small, <laughs> you know, going in there. And, so anyway, he went into the other classroom. It was okay, not great. And then she was going to go on maternity leave the next year. And we were really, really hoping it was this one substitute he loved so much. This very kind, kind um, girl. But I found out that it was, because I worked there, I found out that it was a different one who had also done a maternity leave in the other room and and it was, it was not good at all. And I had gone to pick him up from school. I had found out and I was picking him up from school and he got in the car and I said, this is gonna be, I found out. And we both basically held each other and cried and cried and cried. The two of us, like, cause I was so sad because he was gonna be so, and he was so sad. And finally he said, okay, I'm, I'm done. I can't do this. And I was like, okay, <laughs> let's do something new. But, you know, I'm a very um, uh, structured person. And we were going to homeschool and work was going to get done. And we were going to get some books and have a curriculum. And we were going to do all this. I didn't buy a curriculum because I was going to be very lenient. So here in Ireland, um, you buy your own books. So you get a book list and you have to go to the school bookstore and purchase your books. And they're, they're all kind of workbooks. Mm -hmm. And I had the book list and I said, look, we'll go. You can pick whatever math book looks fun, whatever English book looks fun. You pick which ones you think look fun. And I thought I was being really generous here. <laughs> and, <laughs> my goodness, 
they're still sitting in the drawer. <laughs> Unless I got rid of them, I may have just thrown them out. I don't know. Um, and so he agreed to that. That's fine. And we started, we, because we weren't, he wasn't going to go back in the September. Um, we went home to Michigan for the month and Lennon was a baby. And so like, if you're traveling with a baby, like once you, once I got home, I was like, I'm not turning around and going back after a week. So we were there for several weeks. So when we got back, we started in October and, you know, at the table every morning and getting this work done. And I was creating like the questions and he was answering them and it was great for about a week. And then it wasn't great. He, it was getting in the way of what he really wanted to do. <laughs> he did, didn't want to do that. <laughs> it was just so in the way. And, <laughs> and I could see what he wanted to do and I could see there was value to it. So, um, but we, we plotted on, we plotted on because my husband, I mean, I was going to be very structured, but I was the one there with him and, mm -hmm. You know, there was a bit of fear there. Now, my husband was not 100% comfortable. So, you know, you got to take into account everybody in the family, how everybody feels about it. So it's like, okay, well, we'll just keep going. We had a very long Halloween break and we had a very long Christmas break and a very long <laughs> midterm and Easter. And my daughter, who had gone all the way through school, she had loved her elementary primary school experience. And she had a very, very bad secondary school, high school experience. It was bad. Uh, very defeating, lost any confidence she had. And the girl was brimming with confidence and it's, it was gone and self-esteem gone, everything gone. So the social aspects of it, the, the way the teachers speak to them, like not even as if they're human beings and, mm -hmm actual accounts of teachers screaming at children and again like it's a small community it's it ha you know when for when it becomes known that that's what happens I mean they're not all lying <laughs> you know they're not it, it's what happens so um anyway she was graduating so she was graduating from school in May my mother and stepdad came over for the month of May or three weeks. So when they came over in May, we just kind of stopped the whole homeschooling because we could, you know, we couldn't possibly do it. They were here and, you know, we had to go do things and Roshin was graduating. And so after that, we just, we just never went back. And um, I kind of knew we weren't going to go back because all of that time that we were struggling with the homeschool book situation, I was researching and researching and diving into anything to do with homeschool. And then of course you find unschooling. I'm like, we're not going to be doing that. <laughs> no way. That's crazy. We'll never do anything like that. And of course, and I found your podcast and I was like, well, you know, there's probably some merit there. Let's, let's just listen, you know, there's got, you know, and then starting to think these ideas are not that crazy. These are ideas. So really, really nice, really <laughs> you know, sounds like an amazing way to be and live and have your family. And so, yeah, of course, you know, you find all, all the ones, Sandra Dodge. And then I just really, I kind of latched onto your podcast and just, I think, inhaled it until it, I got to, <laughs> you know, present day, just like constantly, constantly, constantly going. And so I knew after the graduation and after we had gone on our summer break that we wouldn't be going back. And I had said it to him and he was all for it because I had, I spent every day with him. So I was sharing everything that I could learn with him and say, how do what do you think about this? And, and how do you feel about this? And is that comfortable to you or is this comfortable to you? And we had this amazing relationship because what had happened in school was that I had become this other home teacher yeah. and I was this authority and the relationship suffered and he's such an amazing spark. That kid, that spark, and it was all but gone and I wasn't having it. I right? no, you can't lose 
this is so amazing what you are. You cannot lose this. I will not allow it. I'm like, you know, Mother Tiger came up and Mm -hmm. said, you are, no, (laughs) big no. But then we had to really rebuild. So we spent a long time of me just really validating and I didn't really know what I was doing, but I knew we needed to, to develop a relationship. And of course, everything in the podcast is all about relationship, relationship, relationship. <laughs> okay, that comes across. <laughs> <laughs> it comes across, yes. And, and, and when, you, when I really needed it, when I really, really needed it. So at the time, Lennon was a baby. And so he didn't, you know, he didn't know what was going on. We had to, I, I said, I don't know how we're going to say this to your dad. I don't, I don't know because he... I call it the fear. He does have the fear a little bit and he, he gets uncomfortable and he wants what's best for his kids. He, he's not trying to be overbearing or, or kind of dominating. He just really wants to make sure that they have absolutely everything in the whole wide world that they possibly need. And he didn't know because we're, it's not like we're in a city. We don't have museums. We don't have great amounts of thing, amenities and, I mean, we have nature and outdoors, but that's not Ronan's thing. So <laughs> we needed to get him. And he's, he, he likes spending time with his friends, but he wasn't a big social outside of school person. He, he's a home bird. He's an introvert. He likes, he, that's just how he is. And so he, he kind of led us there and we've been ever since, slowly, slowly, slowly moving further and further and further in that direction wow wow no I really love that and it does with your son it sounds quite familiar to my son as well you know oh really oh yeah because and and it's it was grade four (laughs) that was the the teacher and and I remember even talking to other teachers about like there was just something about yeah now we mean business kind of deal anyway yeah so that he was like three or four weeks in there and then it was like you know we have to find a different place now I hadn't found homeschooling yet so we found another school but yeah just seeing like you know this child and you see them in action right and you see that spark and you see that joy and you have so much fun with them yet Mm -hmm that isn't the person they can see they in, don't, in the classroom, right? But you not see how, how amazing this kid is. He's so amazing. I mean, I, maybe I'm biased because I'm his mother, but <laughs> I mean, they, were, they, had, they did a unit on the Titanic and he loved it because it was the big anniversary, so whatever years ago yeah. it was. Yeah. And he, he loved it. He, he, he was reading as many books as he possibly could on it. He wasn't goofing off. He wasn't doing, and, and he got in trouble because the next week they had moved on to a different unit yeah. and he was still reading about the Titanic after he had done whatever, he, the bare minimum of whatever he had to do. He was sneaking to read about the Titanic and he was caught reading about the Titanic. And he's like, oh, I had my book taken away because I couldn't. I'm like, what book? Oh, the Titanic. He was in it, you know. <laughs> All into the Titanic. It was big. And I'm like, okay, well, that doesn't make sense. Well, we moved on to a different unit and he needs to follow. And yeah. Oh, he wasn't ready to move on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, and I love that. That I think I think that's um a way that quite a few people come to homeschooling and unschooling is through the discovery that you know because they know their child and and they love you know you said maybe I'm biased but I think like all children are amazing in their own ways right and the parents can see the mom who whoever spending a lot of time with them can see that and then when the environment's not a good fit in school, you can really, really just see that spark disappear, right? So uh, that, that's so interesting. And, you know, hearing about your daughter who thrived in that, like, so it's, it, it has to do with 
really with the personalities and how they learn and how they like to engage in things and does it mesh with the environment itself versus versus yeah, and I mean, she went exactly one size fits all yeah and she went from this sort of arts based school into yeah. the bigger school where that wasn't the case yeah and she yeah. she foundered yeah. a lot there was a, there was a lot of there was a lot of issues there big yeah. big issues and i had no idea that i could just say get out of there yeah. <laughs> i had no yeah. idea and then yeah. when I, we did find it and and i it, she was in her last year and i said you want to quit <laughs> She's like, I've come this far, I've one year left, I'll just do it. And I'm like, well, just know from me that I don't require mm -hmm. anything. Yeah. yeah <laughs> you know, exactly. We're there, choosing to be there, do the work if you want, it's up to you. I just, you, you got to find some happiness somewhere. So, yeah, no, no, that's right. And as you talked about with your son too, that it's his choice, right? You were giving him that option because. You know, certainly at, at, at that age and that age is young, but for them to know like that is a huge piece to know all of a sudden that they have control. Like even knowing like your daughter, knowing that she was choosing to just put herself through that last year to get it done because she knew what she, you know, she wanted to feel like she had finished that since she'd gotten so far. Right. You know, that that I'm sure even that made a big difference to her. In, in at least <laughs> it was her choice. Yeah, exactly. So I'd be curious to know. Him, oh, go ahead. I did. I didn't want with him. I didn't want to say, right, we're homeschooling. I didn't want it to be a punishment. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you know, did something did, wrong. You failed that. So now you have to do this. Oh, now you have to stay home because you can't manage that. And yeah, I didn't want it to be that way because that's not a good way to start. So. Mm -hmm. no exactly anything, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anything. <laughs> well that was it I still remember the the evening I in the evening in March when I went around and told the kids each of the kids separately you know so that they could really feel that it was their choice not like getting caught up in someone else's excitement or whatever you know but going around hey I found out recently that you don't have to go to school you can stay home and we can learn here. Would you like to do that? Does that sound something interesting to you? Yeah. So getting that level of, of um, choice, of, of understanding, of enthusiasm, you know, that, that was really, that was a big part of starting. <laughs> and each one, I'd say, had different questions. Yes. It would affect each child so differently. So, wow, that's that's great. Yeah, no, <laughs> and I remember being surprised at how differently it they re like they were all very enthusiastic. But over the next three days, you know, a couple of them just like dove right in, like no problem. And then and then right. my daughter was just like, "Wow, I can't believe I don't have to go to school." <laughs> you know, it was it was just fascinating to see how they absorbed it. <laughs> Yeah, Ronan, once Ronan was let go, once he didn't yeah. have to be at the dining room table anymore and he could just go, he's gone. He hasn't come back yet. He's still gone. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and that's it. That's the other piece I remember too. It was, you know, okay, well, let's just get this, get, you start to find yourself saying, let's just get a little bit done here and then you can go. And then you're like, wow, that feels weird to say. And then, and then you start noticing that, oh, you know, what I'm keeping them away from and how much they're learning from that. And it, it was really, really helpful in my de-schooling process, you know. Because yeah, we're going through it too. I mean, this yeah. is only for me too. And I'm like, I don't know. Am I ruining him? <laughs> what, you know, is Lennon going to go to school? And that was a big question too. Like when Lennon, oh, I was starting to, you know, Lennon starts turning four and then he starts turning five and people are like, well, is he going to go to school? Is he going to go to school? I'm like, it's up to him. But I, he, he, he did, you know, his cousins go to school that are his age and, and they make it sound like an amazing place. And it, it is fun at that age, it's super fun. Um, but all I have to say is, well, you do have to get dressed every day. <laughs> 
he's like, I'm out. No, not for me. <laughs> so, I would be very curious to hear um, what was one of the more challenging aspects of de-schooling for you? So well, the biggest challenge yeah. so far for me, and it is so far because you keep going, you keep thinking, oh, I've got it now. No, you don't. <laughs> There's another layer. Yes, there's always <laughs> another <working>. layer. <laughs> always another layer. Um, the biggest, for me personally, the biggest challenge has been um, making sure that my husband is comfortable with the choices that are happening. I, I don't want him to feel like I'm just taking over and this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But also, I kind of want to take over and do this. Because <laughs> <laughs> really, really, I want this. <laughs> if I'm really honest about it, that is what it is. So I really want to make sure that he's comfortable. So when I did say, you know, I don't think we're going to do that again in September. And he, I've, and I would, of course, share with him as much as I, the parts of what I had been researching. But, you know, he hasn't read any of the books and he hasn't done any research. And, and that's okay, because I've been doing it. and. I'm the one who's here and I would read him a few things that would make sense. Or I would say, you know, what about your own schooling experience, which wasn't fantastic. You know, he didn't mm -hmm. have a great time. He, he got through because of sports, but if it weren't for that, it, the rest of it was not great. Um, so I have to keep reminding him of that, but he, he had what I, I mean, I call it the fear. Mm -hmm. So he gets the fear. <laughs> so every time, you know, well, we all do it every now and then. I mean, uh, just, I don't know, was it on the network a few weeks ago? I was like, Lena discovered YouTube. Ah! <laughs> yeah. I, like I got the fear. <laughs> um, oh, we're good with that now. It's fine. I just <laughs> flowed right through. That's okay. But he, he does get it. And, and I think in the beginning, I was only new and I, I didn't, I didn't know the words so I would get kind of defensive and I would get kind of like, but, 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 and I mean, now we've been doing it long enough that I, that I can see it and I can just validate him and be like, yeah, that is a little bit scary. Sometimes, sometimes it hits me too. And then I see that he's making a boat in Kerbal Space Program and see that he's fine. <laughs> but one of the, the, the main thing for him when we decided we weren't, that I wasn't going to go back to me doing the homeschool and we were going to start on schooling was he said, well, he has to have a math class. He has to have math because then um, when he's 16, he can be an electrician because I'm an electrician and he can be an apprentice under me. Uh, I was going, what? Okay. <laughs> but that was his comfort level at the time. Ronan was like 12. So I said, Ronan, how do you feel about this? He's like, I don't care. It's fine. He doesn't, he didn't care. He, and, um, hit my brother-in-law, his uncle is this genius math computer person. So I just set up a once a week class with him and he's one of the kindest, um, human beings on the entire planet. So I'm quite happy to pay him 20 euro for just, I don't care if you ever learn math, just be in his presence because he's really kind and nice and, and patient. And if you, that, I'm like, yeah, be it, do that. <laughs> learn that. I mean, he, Ronan already is that, but um, he's just a really, really nice man. And, and so we just, we paid for that until locked. But he is, uh, his uncle, my brother-in-law, he is a, dancer he does Ottawa Valley dancing he's from Canada oh. so <laughs> he dances with the chieftains a big Irish group and they tour the world so uh, there's a lot of music in in this family and a lot of touring the world with people so <laughs> he, he tours with them so he would be gone five or six weeks at a time and even though Ronan enjoyed spending time with him they were they were only doing Khan Academy. That's all they were doing. I mean, he could do it <laughs> but you know, it made my husband happy. And then when he was 16, he could take whatever equivalency he needed to, and then he could become an apprentice, but you have to be able to pass math or something along that those lines. But then, so this is my big obstacle is like, okay, so we're we've decided on this, and in my head, I'm like, he that's not 
the way that's going to work out, but that's okay. We'll deal with that when we have to deal with that. And <clears throat> so about a year ago, and Ronan's 15 now, maybe a year ago, maybe less than a year ago, he, every now and then, James will take Ronan with him to work. Uh, because he'll need an extra pair of hands. If he can't get one of the guys that works for him, if the guy, if he's on a different job, if he needs an extra pair of hands, Ronan will go with him. And sometimes Roshin would go with him. But and Ronan was with him one day and he said, he came home and he said, do you know that Ronan is colorblind? And I said, do you not know that Ronan is colorblind? <laughs> You're not aware of that? Because I've known this and since he was four or five, six, and we were coloring, and he didn't care. It, it, even in school with coloring, everything was either orange or brown. That was it. And, you know, he would ask, I would ask him to pass me something, and he would pass me a different color, and I'd be like, hmm. So, yeah, I do know that he is red, green, colorblind. <laughs> and he said, well, he can't be an electrician. You can't be colorblind. And I'm like, Oh, darn. <laughs> oh, well, what are you going to do? But he hasn't said anything. He didn't say anything. I just said, oh, I didn't know that. He's like, you can't be an electrician if you're colorblind. I'm like, well, I don't know if Ronan wants to be an electrician. <laughs> but so he hasn't really said anything since, and he hasn't really brought it up. And um but that te- that's kind of our, we're not always on the same page. Or we're not always at, in, the, we're not always on, in the same place at the same time. So that is kind of the big, for me, it's probably not for the whole family, but just for me, that's my kind of my biggest obstacle is just making sure that everybody's comfort levels are respected. You know, it's important to me that every member of the family, I don't care what age you are, that your opinion is heard, that your voice is heard and that there's respect there. So, and that includes James who is outside of the house a lot. So he does get, he does get left out of idea of decisions sometimes. Cause like, Hey, we're going to do this. Oh, you were at work. You don't know. (laughs) So I really try and make sure that he's okay because I, it's not nice. It's not nice to, to have that kind of anxiety and stress. And I want that alleviated as much as I can do. But then again, I, I, I can't, I can't do it all. Like I'm not in charge of him. So <laughs> he has to do that work himself. So <laughs> and he is, he, he really is. And he's pulled me up a few times lately when I, he gave Lennon a phone and I was like, what are you getting on the phone? He's like, eh. So like, oh, okay. All right. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I loved a couple of pieces really jumped out at me. The first was how um about how so often we're not like in the same place. And I think that is so often true, you know, in, uh, in relationships too, is that like we're all we are all unique, different people, right? And we're all learning different things at different paces, different things jump out on our own journey together. It's our own journey. Yeah. Separate. Yeah. So I think it's pretty rare, like whether it's about parenting or about, you know, whatever topic that we're all like completely in sync, you know, I think having that expectation can get in the way too. Cause the other piece that you talked about that I thought was awesome is, you know, at first, Um, When we're first learning, we don't have a lot of words. We feel more defensive because we can't, we don't yet have enough experience to really be able to explain and share examples and that kind of stuff. But then when you got there, you were able to start to join him where he was and validate where, what he was feeling, what he was seeing and being able to meet him there to start to share little pieces and to understand where he might need some you know, like you were talking about, you found a way that um, your son could just hang out with his uh, his uncle, right, for for an right. hour. That that also ha- helped your husband be comfortable, and that experience was working for everyone. And you guys were learning from it, not not particularly, you know, the the little bits of math were the least of the learning in there. Is probably what right. I'm trying to say, right? <laughs> 
And it's not, he doesn't struggle with it. I mean, he picks it up. It's the same same story throughout all of any sort of actual schooling that he's had is he can do it. It does not interest it. And when he's not interested, good luck. (laughs) He doesn't have that thing where the teachers used to say, well, will you do it for me? No. (laughs) No. I won't do it for you. I want to go play. (laughs) Oh, exactly. Exactly. And that was the part too, that I saw getting, you know, worn. It's like, for how long can you still, you know, hold your own ground and be yourself? Like, well, you know, they made it through grade four. (laughs) Right. Right. And I mean, you know, you know, trying to hold on with everybody's coming at you. It's yeah. A lot, and I think the other the other piece that I um, really want to I don't know why I want to make a point of is that I validate my husband as much as I can, and I had a real big thing where I I needed him to be comfortable so that I could be comfortable, mm-hmm. and I've had to sometimes just let him be uncomfortable, and let him work through it. And if it was a major thing, I'm so happy to talk to you about it. I'm so happy to find a common ground that will work with you and will work with me. But to, to be able to realize that his feelings, the same way that my kids' feelings are not my feelings and they're not mine to be in charge of. Yeah. Sometimes you have to sit in it. Yep. Um, oh, no. I love that. I love that point. So, yeah. Because it's not, because then what can happen too, I think, is if we're just quickly trying to react and get everybody comfortable as fast as possible, we can just be shooting back and forth and it's just confusing and chaos for everybody. I mean, I have enough going on in my brain. The the (laughs) age gaps between the kids, I mean, I have enough with making sure that all these, (laughs) I've finally had to be like, I don't know. Yeah, and, and, and as an example, information as I have, <laughs> I don't have any more information. Yeah, yeah, and and I that that was a really important piece too, like having those conversations and letting those conversations sit a little bit, right? You know, saying yeah, you can validate, you can understand, you can have a conversation, you can sh- we can share our perspective if they're open to hearing it, and and it can sit for a while can say let's think about this some more and see what happens let's kind of think about this and and you know watch watch the kids through that lens for a little while and bring it and then have have a conversation in, in a, a week uh you know of part weeks. that I struggle with because I want everybody to hurry up and be happy I know, <laughs> you know and my husband you know with James and I know this about him if there's something, he's, he's a deep thinker. So if I, if I want to plant a new idea or if I want to come at, I can't come at him and say, so I want to do this. I want to do this. this, this, this he's like, it's too much. So I have to kind of say, this is what I'm thinking about this. You know, if I, if it's, I would like to, you know, travel here or travel there you know, he, he, he makes the money and he does the finances. It doesn't mean he's in charge of everybody, but he kind of knows where we're at, you know, and he wants everybody to do all the things they could possibly want to do. He really, really does. He wants to make sure that everybody gets to do everything. But I might say, well, look at this might be a fun thing. And I have to stop talking and let him go with that. And two weeks later, He will come back with, well, if you did this and you did that, then you could do that. And then you could do this. And his idea is eight, eight bazillion times better than mine. (laughs) Always, always so much better. And I think I've got all the details worked out. And then he comes back and just blows me away. So I just kind of say, what about this? And he might go, oh yeah, right. Okay. But he'll come back and he'll say, well, what if you did that? And it's like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. <laughs> so, <laughs> that idea. so yeah, let's do it your way. Let's do it your way. But right? and, and that piece we're saying, that's amazing, right? Yeah, and support, important. it is important to acknowledge those pieces, to acknowledge those pieces that we do well, to acknowledge 
all the little steps along the way and being open to changing. Like that was something I learned quick, you know, to to kind of know where I want to go or plant the seed in the direction I think I want to go, but not to like name the destination and the path that everybody needs to take. Right. Right. Something I Just learned know looking at my that. kids, but it works yeah. with everyone, doesn't it? And even uh, I, I am like, I, the, I would like that. I don't know. I don't have to know how it's going to happen. <laughs> I don't have to know. It's I beautiful just, how it unfolds. So. Well, and it's better and it's in a better way than yeah. I thought would work. So yeah. Yeah. I tend to just, I, I, I'd like to just let things go now. If I remember, sometimes I get all caught up in myself and then I have to go, mm -hmm. put it down, put it down, walk away. Yeah. yeah. But that's my obstacle. <laughs> the, We're always learning and growing, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> working with yeah uh, I know I always just hope well hopefully next time I'll notice it faster before you know right I'm right that's cool. funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah catch it catch it quicker catch yeah. it before I start going but 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 oh, I wanted to yeah <laughs> <laughs> so what has surprised you most about your unschooling journey so far um yeah the biggest surprise when I first got into this, I was like, this is going to be great for the kids, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I did not realize how much I was going to get out of it and how much James was going to get out of it and how like by me loosening up and trying new things and not being perfect all the time really allowed James to relax and be who he really is. And me for me to just watch the kids and watch how they just naturally do this and I just love watching all of them because they always surprise me they're with how they handle disappointments or even happy times how things get handled how they handle their reactions and themselves and it, it's just such a joy but I am I am incredibly surprised how it's family wide as opposed to just well we're just going to do this for the kids now and it's going to be great and I don't have to do anything except for de-school a little bit but <laughs> you know and it becomes so big and I think I appreciate everything more I have so much more curiosity. I'm so much more interested in what if we do this? What if we do that? If anybody asks me a question, I'm, I'm, I don't know. Let's Google it. Let's figure it out. Let's, and it, even if it, it doesn't have to be something you dive into, it could just be like, how does this work? And you look at it and go, well, that's how that works. Well, that's interesting. Okay. And you move on just a small thing. It doesn't have to be a massive big thing, but how, when anybody, no matter what age, gets to have the time to be interested and spend time in their interest. How many little pathways that don't seem to match up. It seems like, where are you going? But they all do. <laughs> it's so, it's great. I love it. I really do. Wow. Yeah, I love that. The, the threads that you have no clue in the moment, right? But when when you look back, you say, oh, you know, that's where you were going. That's how that was connected. It is so fascinating, isn't it? Right. I'm, since I was in my 20s and I came here, I've, I've been very, very interested in um, health and helping people. And I, I've just, since we started the unschooling is when I really, really got into it. And that's when I qualified as a kinesiologist and I was a prana healer, but I'm, I, I started working and, and, and doing it because I had confidence of like, hey, I know how to do this. This works. This is fantastic. Energy, you know, is great. And learning more and more about that and then learning more about the kinesiology side, which is it, it, some of its energy, but there's a physical side, a lot of physical things too which I didn't hadn't known anything about the anatomy of the body and then all the nutrition and and not I don't believe that one diet is right for everybody everybody gets to pick and I happen to be a vegan 
I was a vegetarian for 12 years and then I decided I would try being vegan because I had an allergy to dairy. So a vegetarian with an allergy to dairy just eats eggs. So <laughs> I'm done. I don't need any more eggs. I'm good. So, um, and then my daughter started getting into the veganism and the plant-based veganism. And then we both started getting into the animal side of it, the, the animal cruelty side of it, because that's not why I got into it for nutrition. And I didn't, the animals weren't even a thing. And then it's like, oh, wow, there's this huge other piece. <laughs> and, massive. and, you know, she dove in there. But, and my husband eats everything that I cook. So he is not picky at all. He's wonderful. And he feels much better when he eats that way. But both of my sons eat meat. And I, it is not a thing. You know, they can eat whatever they choose to eat. Ronan cooks for himself. No, I don't ever cook anything for him. I, I would, but he's quite happy. He cooks his own meals and does his own, has done probably for the past, I don't know, year. Maybe he just started doing his own dinners and food. He eats at different times. 3 a.m. <laughs> he's eating at different times. So I would always make stuff and ask him if he wanted it. And he, I still make stuff and say, do you want some of this? No. I'll make something but they eat meat and I mean I think when I was first learning it I would I would kind of harp on about it but now it's like you do you you get to pick I got to pick everybody gets to pick it's a choice so many choices we have choices you know it just so. that one realization is so life-changing isn't it just to realize you know what? Everything really is a choice. And as individuals, we really can pick what makes the most sense and feels better for us. And the other big piece is that it's, it's not a judgment if your choices change over time, right? That's the other You get to change. Yeah. You get to change your mind. <laughs> I love that. I love it so much. That's a big one for me because once I decided, I decided that was it. But it's like you you get to change your mind. Without and declaring yourself wrong. <laughs> There's no wrong. It's not nothing's wrong. You've just changed your mind. Yeah. Try something different. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it's so nice. It it's is. Very it great. Is. So I wanted to dive into your kids. Um, there's quite a big age gap between them. So you had one who like went to school right through high school and one who left around grade four or five and one who's yet never been to school. So I, I found that really interesting because you must have found yourself in distinctly different seasons, you know, of, of growing up with each of them, but all at the same time. Right. So I just was hoping you could share a bit of your experience with that. Yes. It's, <laughs> it's so interesting. I'm, I'm loving this. I just love watching what is going on. Um, you know, cause we had Ronan who had had quite a bit of issues with with his school is very unhappy and then he had a lot of healing to do and a lot of de-schooling to do and he has done all that and he knows himself he knows what he likes he knows what he doesn't like if I say hey do you want to go here no or yeah he knows and and he, he's not apologetic about it about who he is yeah and it took him a while and he he's there I and, and Lennon, because he just has been, he was kind of born into it. And if he has known himself since the day he was born. I think everybody probably does, but we lose ourselves. But yeah, since the day that kid was born, you weren't telling him anything. And even now, sometimes we still, sometimes you still have to do things. Like if you have to get in the car and go home, is what we have to do. And you can be upset about it. And I, I, completely agree that it's upsetting that you don't want to stop playing with your cousin or whatever but he knows himself and he knows this is not what I want and it's so nice for me able to go I know you don't want this I know this is the last thing that you want this is I what we got to do and so we're going to do it and we've stayed as long as we can and you know whatever it is so he is great and we all just look at him myself and Roshin specifically because we've had all the schooling <laughs> and uh, we just kind of look at him and be like, I wonder what that's like. I wonder what that's like to just grow up and be loved and, and 
uh, and get to do the things that you love and it's everybody says they're good it's good and you don't have anybody telling you but you need to but you have to but you should you don't have any of that you just have people going yeah you're great have another Oreo, run around naked, <laughs> you know, play with your Legos. <laughs> um, you know, it's just such a different start than she had. You know, I, I pretty much every single day he has a treat before he has breakfast. I want my treat before breakfast. All right. <laughs> okay. He eats, it's not a problem. He eats low, he eats everything because not, he eats everything because nothing is taboo you know nothing is good or bad as he eats it all whereas i mean even i still struggle with oh i can't have that until i have this and, mm -hmm. and i mean i i'm so much better now i'm, I'm having whatever i want but <laughs> um but those uh, messages are still embedded in there you have, you have to do that and through them right he just doesn't have that i mean I, i'm sure to some degree it it will it will it will get there, but I mean, we are living in a society that is that <laughs> way. But um, he doesn't—he doesn't care. He—he's himself, and I like that unapologetic about who he is. I just love that so much. And now, you know, Roshan graduated, and then she moved to Dublin, which is on the other side of the country. It's a three and a half, four-hour drive. She was not at home for the big work of the unschooling of the de-schooling yeah yeah she wasn't home for those first couple of years where the big work is done she was off doing her things that she chose to do and I was on the phone with her almost every day making you know it's your choice you get to pick you get to choose do I do this do I do this what do you want to do it's not a wrong choice there's nothing wrong but she wasn't living it she wasn't in our home with that so now she has come home for lockdown and she was she got here before say early march i'd say and that is what she's doing she's doing that really really deep deep de-schooling of where you just sit in a beanbag and read your book for three days and she's such an active person. And she's like, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? And I'm like, nothing. <laughs> I have that look on my face of like, oh, everything's going to be really good for you. <laughs> it's all going to be good. Like, nothing is wrong. You read your book. <laughs> and I've had to say, you know, this is, this is so, I love this because when I was, we were doing the bulk of the work, it was us. It was me. It was Ronan. Lennon was coming up, James was dealing with a lot of stuff, and we've kind of got past the big, big feelings. So now she's doing this, and I'm coming at it from a totally different plane. Yeah. It, I'm not, I'm, I'm not kind of questioning myself. I'm immediately like, you get to choose. It's that simple. It really is. Wow. So yeah. And she's decided not to go back to Dublin and she doesn't want to go back to her job that she had because it was taking away from the acting, which she really wants to pursue. And she's, all oh, these things are happening. And it's so nice that she can be here and have this time and decompress and really figure herself out and get that confidence back and get that self-esteem and be able to then go back out into the world on her own terms. So I'm really excited, but it's so, you know, it's different for me too. I have, I'm looking at this as like a different piece being, well, she's older and she should help the younger ones. Whereas it, we were doing it backwards, <laughs> you know, then it just like was born and was like, ta-da, I'm amazing. <laughs> you know, Ronan had, you know, Ronan got knocked down, but he got back up and they're both, like, what's your question? Do what you want. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, we're learning from them. And uh, it's, it's just so funny the way that life does these things, <laughs> the way that yeah. it goes. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I found that so fascinating. That's why I wanted to hear more about that because what an opportunity, too, for Roisin to 
be able to have this time, right? And to, to hear how that's going for her and and her curiosity too. Like, is this okay? I, like, that is just so beautiful. Like, you, I can just see, you know, rubbing your hands with like, oh, I'm so happy for you. Just so happy for her to be able to have this space and to be able to see that, yes, it's okay to not go back. Yes, it's okay to, you know, choose to keep uh, working towards the acting that's, that is something you want to pursue right now. You know, just, just being able to let her steep in all these possibilities and just the idea of making these choices that she's like, oh, that is what I would love to do. Is that really something that I could? Yeah, that's just so beautiful. Yes, say yes. Yes, yes. Like she came when she first came home, she had her notebook. She loves notebooks. She loves all sorts of like pen and notebooks and you know, all that type of she loves all the notebooks and the papers and the school supplies and all those things. So she always has them. She had her notebook and she makes these little boxes and she makes these little things and she checks off the boxes as she goes every day. She's doing this checklist and then she was at the end of the day, I didn't go for a walk or on my checklist I didn't I didn't I didn't I wanted to finish that painting because she was she knew she paints sometimes so she's like, I wanted to finish that painting I didn't finish that painting and I'm like I think maybe you're putting more importance on your checklist the checklist is a, is a list of things that you want to do but nobody cares if you do them you're not going to get in trouble <laughs> if you don't go for a walk you know <laughs> And then the things on her checklist were like cartwheels. <laughs> oh, I forgot to do my cartwheels today. And I'm like, really? What? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. What a big so difference she, to see that. It's not a have to list. It's and the, she's like, oh my. And I just, I could see her brain going. <gasps> it's become about the checklist and not even about what the things on the checklist. It's yeah, all about yeah. ticking boxes. It's very schoolish, you know, that mm-hmm. whole like tick all the boxes, do all the things. I'm perfect. That's right. Yeah. And it's, it's about you were doing these things because you enjoy doing them. So if you didn't get time to do them, it's because you were really enjoying this that you were doing. And that's really good. It's not just okay. It's exactly what you should be doing. <laughs> so, yeah. so she still has her checklist and she does love a good checklist, but she is fine if she doesn't get everything done and they're smaller I think <laughs> <laughs> oh I love that I love that so much so what is your favorite thing about the flow of your unschooling days right now my my favorite is that we do flow just flow I mean we're renovating the house right now. You can see every Lego piece in the world is behind me. <laughs> <laughs> we, the new floors just got poured today. We had a leak. It was this whole big thing. How some of the floor was had to be drilled up. We've been walking on planks for weeks and weeks and weeks because all the hardware stores have been closed and everything's been closed and nobody can work. And my husband did as much as he could, but like he couldn't get supplies. So, and we had to wait for insurance. And during the a massive, massive renovation like that. Uh, I, in my head, I would just assume that, you know, you have to make a lot of, you have to make a lot of decisions. You have to make, okay, well, what kind of heating system are we going to put in? Well, what kind of tiles? Well, we have to repaint the walls and <clears throat> all these different choices and people have really strong opinions. And it's just not been a problem. Everything, you know, when we're walking in on these, these huge big holes and so we have to walk over these planks, we're all just like, okay, <laughs> okay. And um, there was, we had one little, one time, I, I think these, you know, when people renovate their houses, I mean, things can come to blows. It, you know, people, I want this color, I want that color, I want, you know, these tiles, those tiles are horrible. And these things that are not important become so important and they're not important at all. And my husband keeps asking me, well, do you, will we do it this way or will we do it this way? I'm like, you're the plumber. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, and my answer is always, whatever way is less stressful for you. 
Whichever way is going to cause you less stress. I mean, if you want it to be really, really nice and, and that's the way you want it to be and it's extra work and you want to do that, then do that. If you don't really care about that part of it and think it's not necessary, then don't do that. Just whatever works. It's a big thing. Our our whole house is in uproar. We've had to move out. I'm climbing through windows to do a yes. Zoom call. <laughs> you know? And it's all just, it's, it's not even just like that we're getting through it. It's fun. We're having fun with it. It's exciting. And we had decided on tiles and he went to go and he could, they couldn't get those tiles, but he was sending me pictures and it, it, it just was like, we well, yeah, look at that one. I don't, I don't care. Get that one. Mm -hmm. And there was one little hiccup about like, we're, we were taking a window out and we were going to make it into a doorway. And then that's what I thought we were doing, but the sink would have to move. And I'm like, well, he's a plumber. He can move that. And, <laughs> um, but in his head, it was going to, it was going to take too much of the insurance money. So we weren't going to be able to do that. And so he, but he was trying to make it the way I wanted it by making it like a smaller doorway. And I'm like, why are you doing that? That's crazy. And we, it just, we did, we had our wires crossed a little bit. And I think it was a little blip. I think probably me being like, why are you being so weird? And he was like, well, I thought this is what you wanted. And um, it was all, it just was all over like before anything. And I kind of went, well, let's just do it this way, the way we were going to do it originally. And he was like, okay, okay, that's <laughs> done. I mean, this, it, it's not a thing. We just flow. And I love that so much because I would tend to be, <sighs> I have a lot of opinions and I have a lot of being right or did have recovering mm -hmm. from being right all the time. <laughs> um, and it's just so nice to be able to be happy and not be right because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All those little things, they don't, they, they are so unimportant and it's so, what is important is the relationship. <laughs> the relationship. <laughs> Every single time. So I think that that started for me when Lennon was born. It was quite a tumultuous birth. Um, I had a car accident and rolled my car into a lake and I was fine. I walked away. Uh, I think I had a bruise. I was, I was good miracle and Lennon was fine but they did an emergency c-section because they didn't know where the seatbelt was the center this and that and so um I, you know in the hospital for a few weeks and he was fine and I was fine but still we were there for a while um just doesn't matter now you know when things like that happen you just kind of go but it's so easy to get swept back up into it but when you have the unschooling, the learning and the de-schooling that you've done and you know what's important and you remember and like that, you get to it faster, <laughs> you know, um, it's just really compounded that flow of, yeah, can I take all these Legos and take them all apart and mix them all up? Sure. <laughs> and but I do you know I do say you know but you're not going to be able to find those pieces to go to this uh, and that's that's that you know cause and effect kind of thing but if that's what you wanted to do go for it yeah do it <laughs> you know who knows could be great could be amazing right right oh that's so amazing thank you so much Jessica I really appreciate you, you taking the time to speak with me it was so much fun <laughs> Thank you so much, Pam, for this whole podcast. It's just, it's, it's really been great for our whole family. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you so much. And before we go, where can people connect with you online? Oh my goodness. Um, so many places. <laughs> I, yeah, I see you online a lot. Um, let's see. I'm on Facebook at Jessica Bartlett Kane. Mm -hmm. And I'm on Instagram at... Lennon's Keeper, all one word, and I should probably change that name. <laughs> it probably doesn't sound very good. But I made my Instagram account when he was a toddler, and he was the first of my children to climb. So at that time, I referred to myself as his keeper. 
<laughs> is he okay? Where is he at? <laughs> He had it. He was good. And so, yeah, at Lennon's Keeper on Instagram, but also on Instagram, um, I am the Diamond Cookbook because that leads to the blog, which is the Diamond Cookbook dot blogspot dot com, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I we'll think. put all the links in the show notes for people too, so they don't have to try and write them down <laughs> while they're listening. Right. Yeah, it's a lot. So, I mean, if you're interested in some fun plant-based, super healthy, but very, very, very yummy treats, then that's the blog. And it's on, yeah, those, those three spaces. Yeah, I don't no, think there's any more. <laughs> I think that's enough. <laughs> I've got my, my breakfast cookie recipe ready. <laughs> oh, my God, oh, how yes, exciting. I, yes, yes, I'm really Great. looking forward to those. <laughs> Yeah, that's Roshi. That, that's Roshi. That's that's her big her big yeah. prize. She made them yesterday too. So she's keeping well, us fed. Appreciate it. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much again, Jessica. Have a great night. Thanks, you too, Pam. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.